Hello and welcome to the Multimatrix channel. In this video we're going to talk about what could Adam Neely have missed about Benedetti's puzzle. Benedetti's puzzle is this. It might seem like a very simple measure of music that just repeats, but here actually lies a big problem in music theory, because this is meant to be played by three human voices which have a sort of natural tendency to form intervals according to the ratios found in the overtone series, and not from the tempered ratios of standard piano. So that every time this measure is repeated, the G note pitch will sound a little bit higher than the starting one, like this. Nah, just kidding. Now, if you don't know what the difference between tempered and pure intervals is, you may not know how to measure music intervals and you want to be able to understand all these numbers, then I shall discuss that topic at length in another video, starting from the basics. But the main problem I would like to discuss here is the conclusion made by Adam Neely which says you cannot have mathematically pure music without the pitch drifting. And about this, I think he might just be wrong. Please don't take it bad, Adam. I love your videos. So there is some key information that can prove this wrong and it has to do with the 22 Shruti Indian tuning system. Please note, I am not a scholar of Indian classical music. I just try to, to understand what Dr. Vidyadar Ok explained in his research, which you may check out on his website. Part 1. The problem itself. The problem that arises from this Benedetti puzzle is that either you get different fundamental frequencies for the same scale degree, or you get a dissonant, so-called out-of-tune, harmonic interval. What are you talking about? I see only one pitch per note and it doesn't sound like dissonant, does it? Well, as I said before, human voices playing all together will tend to find consonant pure intervals instead of tempered intervals. Now, what are consonant pure intervals? The closest ratios given by multiplying the first five harmonic ratios of the overtone series, so basically the farther from these ratios, the more dissonant the interval gets. F a choral ensemble plays this measure trying to be as consonant as possible, then the upper syncopated voice will resolve down in a G pitch, which is not in perfect unison one-to-one -one ratio with the G on the first beat, but a syntonic comma or in 22 Shruti system, a Pramana Shruti higher instead. Another problem of choosing these ratios is that the melodic interval in the bass line forms a 27 over 20 ratio, which is dissonant compared to the 4 over 3 ratio. So it will be harmonically consonant with the upper voice, but not so melodically consonant. So what if we want this G pitch to be one and only fundamental frequency? Then we can fix the melodic dissonance in the bass but get a dissonance in the soprano instead, because the A from this upper voice cannot form a consonant pure perfect fifth 3 over 2 ratio with the D below, but should be in this 120 over 81 dissonant ratio in order to keep the G pitch steady. So summarizing, we arrive to either of these cases, harmonic consonance with unavoidable pitch drifting in the G note and melodic dissonance in the bass, or one and only fixed G pitch with harmonic dissonance among voices. All of this sounds interesting, but you said this is related to 22 Shruti tuning system. How is it? Part 2 how 22 Shruti scale relates to this. In Indian classical music theory, there are also seven note names, which are also divided in 12 chromatic degrees, but 10 out of these 12 are again divided in two. So there are movable chala degrees and fixed a chala degrees. That is why there are 22 ratios instead of 24, as many people take them to be quarter tones, which they are not. They are not quarter tones. I shall try to explain some more essential features of this tuning system at length in another video. These are the 22 Shruti ratios. But all these ratios are included already in just intonation tuning system. Why is it different? Because there are just 22 intervals with fixed accidentals while in just intonation you can move infinitely around the spiral of fifths with infinite possible definitions for the same single degree. If we analyze Benedetti's puzzle with this 22 Shruti notation, we get that both cases we described are included in the scale itself. Yeah, but the problem is still there. You're just changing the name notes. You're not really solving anything, are you? Part 3. How to actually 
solve it. Dr. Vidyadar Ok explains in one of his lectures an important 22 Shruti usage principle that says you have to know whether it is a Pancham prominent raga or a Madhyam prominent raga so that the Rishav and Dhaibat will be different upon that. What I get from this is that there are two poles from our C note disguising here as this capital S letter which is technically the one to one ratio. These two poles are Pancham, the fifth degree or G note 3 over 2 ratio and the Madhyam, the 4th degree or F note, 4 over 3 ratio, which is the inversion of the pure 5th from the overtone series. And these two poles do not share consonances and that is why the D note pitch will be in a 9 over 8 ratio from C if you measure it from Pancham, the G note moving a pure 5th above. And, on the other hand, if you measure it from Madhyam, the F note, moving a pure third above, it will be in a 10 over 9 ratio. So the consonant fourth degree is the lower Shruti indicated by the capital M and the number 1. So the overall idea is that the lower fourth degree is consonant with the set of Shrutis with number 1, and the one and only fifth degree Pancham is consonant with the set of Shrutis with number 2 then this Benedetti's puzzle problem is not a tuning problem but a compositional one instead. It is this specific counterpoint that makes difficult to keep the steadiness of the G-pitch and compromise the harmonic and melodic consonances because it mixes both harmonic poles, pancham and madhyam. So after all, having music perfectly in tune is actually possible if you follow this principle which leads to another harmonic theory with rules which might be very different from what we study in the Western world. Yeah, but you keep bluffing. I want to know how to solve this for real. Part 4. How to solve it. For real. The only out-of-the-box solution I can think about is that we could make use of the concept of chala, or movable scale degree, so D natural is a movable degree unlike C and G, so we might add an ornament there in order to attack in first instance the higher D natural which is consonant with G and solve to the lower D natural which is temporary dissonant to G but will eventually be consonant with F, keeping the starting C pitch steady. You may transpose these note names if you don't like the movable C way of analyzing it, the ratios will not change. This solution would be definitely on a different style of what Benedetti used to listen in choral music, but it kind of balances the problem of fixing the one-to-one -one ratio pitch and compromising the less possible the consonances. So the pitch drifting is still there, you have just put it in between. But it's not like we're changing the whole set of pitches in every repetition. With this 22 Shruti scale you may actually play this whole case forming intervals with one single fixed pitch we call tonic, movable C note or SA note. Otherwise, if you don't agree with the solution, at least notice that music perfectly in tune is actually possible, but you have to follow this principle that you have to focus on one single pole either 4th or 5th degree. Or you may add some strange syntonic comma ornaments like we did before. In many books it is said that barat music do not develop complex harmony, but I would say it is just another harmonic language with different rules, because at the end of the day, wherever there is a scale, be it tempered or not, there always will be implicit harmonic relationships within it. If you liked this video and want to watch more content related to these topics, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, give it a like and see you soon. Oh and here it is, some mathematically pure without pitch drifting version of the lake.